Hello. Hi. I'm Chef Emily. Chef Rebecca. That's Chef Shiv. Welcome to the little school of improbable cooking. Ooh. We're not having a good time, guys. We're not. 2020 is. <clears throat> We've had every gig cancelled. All of them. We were really looking forward to the Pixie Wedding. The Dragon Birthday Bash. The Troll Spectacular. Yeah, I was a bit worried about that one, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Bit smelly. Big bit feet. smelly, big feet. Bad Sick. music. Mm. Bit rubbish, that one. Still, we were looking forward to stuff as well. Yeah, we were of course. Sort of, we're feeling a bit down, got nothing to do. Yeah. I don't know what you guys have been doing, little chefs. Have you been chefing at home? I hope so. If not, then... Uh, We've just been, uh, we've been playing like tennis with a giant spoon yeah. and an egg. Got that tip off Ethan. Thanks Ethan, yeah. if you're watching. I got splattered. Thanks Ethan. It was quite funny actually. That was my highlight 2020 so <sighs> far. Ethan. Yeah, my, not mine. <sighs> Chef Shiv's lost the voice because it's just too much. I've just remembered something. What? You're going to love this little chef. This is really exciting what? and cool. You're going to love it too, Chef Emily. What? It's even going to perk you up, Chef Chef. I think it will, I think it will. Go on. There's something that you do not know about the improbable school of cookery. You'll what? never guess, you'll never guess. Can you guess? What? Um, it's got lions living in the back. Uh, well, yes, but that wasn't what I was thinking of. What? We've got lions living in the back. Oh, don't worry about that now, they've been fed today. Right then, so, I know that's Shiv's job. Why she was pressed as well. We've got a time machine. No, we haven't. We have the a time, time machine. The fridge in what? the stove cupboard. What's a time machine? I swear. Can we? Can I? Can I actually have a go, knowing what it is? Yeah, let's have a go. I'm fed up with 2020. Let's oh, say yeah. Off. Right, let's get in our time machine fridge and see where we we end up. Should we take some ingredients with us? Oh yeah, we better had actually. I'm up in medieval Britain one time. They mostly only eat turnips. It's not good. It's not good, good. guys. Let's take some biscuits. Let's take some cream cheese. Yeah. That sort of thing. So okay. We're gonna blow their minds with our ingredients from 2020. Let's get in the fridge. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh, where will we end up? What's going on? I'm, I've, I've transformed, but we're still in the little school of improbable cooking. Oh, I forgot to say, because our school's so magical, it's actually been here since even before humans were alive. It used to be run by dinosaurs in the Jurassic Age. It's always looked like this. What? I know, so you just turn up, you turn up in the kitchen, but if you look out the window, you'll see. <gasps> There's an aching man running! I know where we are. Ancient Greece. Ain't there, that would explain the ghetto. I'll tell you what, another very interesting fact about ancient Greece. Go on. They invented the cheesecake. No, they didn't. That's, it's true, you can check Wikipedia at home if you want to. The ancient Greeks invented the cheesecake and they invented it for the Olympics. So, for the um, Olympics? For the Olympics. Now, I don't know their exact recipe, but I thought we'd have a go at a no-bake cheesecake. A no bake cheesecake. Cheesecake of champions. Ha ha. Shall we do it? Let's do it. Yeah. Ready? We are going to make Olympian 
No bake. No bake. No baking. Cheesecake. Champion cheesecake. Very exciting. So, our first job is we've chosen a packet of biscuits. Mm -hmm. We've gone for... Digestive biscuits. Classic biscuit choice. Classic. But you can Good go dunkers. Any biscuit you like. Mm -hmm. uh, if, it's, if you go for Oreos, you'll just need to either eat or scrape out the creamy bit in the middle. Any cream biscuit, get rid of that because you only want the crunchy yeah, bits. Yeah, just want the crunchy, so this is going to be your base. So what you want is, we're going to make roughly for about four people, aren't we? Four, yeah. If, we, if you want to make more, you just add more. So we're going to do about two, roughly two, digestive per person. So I'm going to put it into a bag or Between lay it on towel. tea towel because we're going to crush these biscuits for two, two, four, six, eight, and one for good luck. Nine. Very nice. So. What we're going to imagine, Rebecca? We're going to get a rolling pin. If you haven't got a rolling pin, you could use a, a roll of cling film or, or a cling film or something weighty, just something that's got a bit of heft to it. Now, little chefs, I think you're going to like this one because basically what you're going to do is you're just going to bash up the biscuits. But we're training here for the Olympic Games, so we we really want to win that discus. Yeah, that's right. Maybe maybe don't swing the rolling pin. Don't at home. swing it around at home. Yeah. So you're going to bash it. Oh, watch your fingers, don't bat your fingers, don't bat your brothers and sisters fingers. Ooh, and have, do you just keep bashing keep and bashing? bashing. Mm. There's some big bits over here. Until all the big bits are gone, so they're little, and you could shake the bag, but don't do that with you. And if you notice some bigger bits, just get get bashing back again. Spoon or just <laughs> making sure the thing you're bashing it with is clean. Okay, step two. My favourite bit's all about the butter. Okay, uh, butter, margarine, any any whatever you choose to use at home, it's lovely. Whatever you choose to use, I've got vegan butter. Very nice, it is too. Right then, so we are going to need. 50 grams of butter. Now, uh, if you've got scales, brilliant, you can weigh it out. It's not that much. Uh, butter packets have uh, grams written on them. So uh, this one is 250 grams. That's a standard butter pack. And there's a little line, if you've ever noticed it, and it's divided into 50 gram chunks. So you can just get your knife and you can cut along that line a 50 gram chunk. Um, but we are back to our spoons as well. If you want to use the teaspoon method. So uh, there's a math challenge for you little chefs and Chef Ebony. Wow. So if each teaspoon is 50 grams, how many? Each teaspoon is 50 grams. That's not right, that's not right at all. If each teaspoon is roughly 5 grams, how many, how many teaspoons will I need for 50 grams? Do you know little chefs? Seven. Seven. A bit more? Higher? Nine. Almost ten. Ten. We have a winner. Okay. So we need, if we're using the teaspoon method, ten teaspoons of butter. But we forgot to mention in the spoon extra video bit that uh, a spoon can be level. A teaspoon can be a level teaspoon or a heaped teaspoon. I know. When you're making hot chocolate, it's usually heaped. But for normal, normal weighing go for a level teaspoon, so at the top of the teaspoon, so you can see that I haven't got a butter mountain here, I've just got a level teaspoon of butter, and I'm going to do that times mm, 10, until I've got 50 mountain. grams in here. It's probably easier if your butter says 50 grams just to cut it, but teaspoon way works too. Mm -hmm. You've got, got, more time. You've got more time, something yeah. to do. So, what we're going to do with our butter now is we're going to melt it. So you can melt it, you can put it in the microwave, mm. How long would it take to melt 50 grams of butter in the microwave, I wonder? 30 seconds. About 30 seconds, but you can, after 30 seconds, you can have a look, and if it's melted, bingo. Otherwise, put it in a bit longer, or you can put it on the hob, you can put your butter in a saucepan, and just melt it on the hob. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the two best ways. Yeah. So, we're going we're gonna to melt our butter. Like magic. 
melted butter, Rebecca. So our next step is to take the melted bu butter, not butter, and the bashed up biscuits, and you add the melted butter to the bashed up biscuits. Like so, and you take a spoon, any spoon, we're gonna go for a wooden spoon right now. Thank you. And get all the rest of that melted butter out of there, like so. And you're just gonna mix it until it looks like wet sand. Oh, I love a bit of wet sand, perfect sand castles. Just really mix it. Oh, it smells good. Biscuits and butter, who thought? Oh yeah. So it should look something like this. Well, that's it, Rebecca. That's the next step done. So, on closer inspection, Chef Shiv, as she is the expert, is rightly pointed out, it's not quite wet sandy enough. So we have melted a little bit more butter. Just add a little bit as you go. I'm gonna add it in and see if it gets to a better consistency. And if it doesn't, then you just melt a little bit more. Who doesn't like more butter? So let's have a go. It's getting there, but I think I'll do one more bit of butter. Uh, we think that's pretty much close enough now. Uh, I've figured out a little test that you can do to see if it is good. So take your, your biscuits and if you've got it in a bowl, smoosh it up to the edge like this and it should compact together. And your test is if it doesn't fall down. Ta-da! Like magic! It's about to get exciting, little chefs. We are on to the cheese mix. Yum! Very nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to put lots of our lovely ingredients in a bowl and mix them all up. So lovely. we are going to take 200 grams, oh, not 200, 600 grams. Yes, not 200. Not 200, 200 no. 600 of cream cheese. This is just regular cream cheese. Most packets is 200 grams, that's what confused me. So we've got three packets that we're going to put in, they're all 200 grams. Uh, you don't need to measure in spoons because it says on what they are. So I'm going to whack them in to our bowl. I'm also going to add icing sugar to make it nice and sweet. And I'm going to add spoon test six of this size spoon. It was the biggest spoon. Do you remember what kind of spoon it was? Table? Brilliant. Tablespoon. We're going to add six tablespoons of icing sugar to our bowl with the cheese. So. And uh, I think we're going to go for level tablespoons. Remember our level, so not too heat. So, it's a bit heat. <laughs> you can get a knife to level it off. That, that would be genius. I haven't done that. Okay, that's enough. I mean, it is heat. <laughs> just shake it off. Shake, you just do a little shake, but not over on the floor. That was one. Onion. There you go, two. two. She loves sugar. I do. That's so why she's got I'm a bit too worried. Worried. Yeah, three. Oh, more shaking. That one's definitely heat. Okay, four. four. Five. And a small one, because I've been a bit generous on the other ones. Yeah, six. Lovely. Mm -hmm. We've got our 50 mils, so here it is. Roughly, rough, you know. A we cream. love a bit of cream. Oh, if very it was a bit nice. More than that's cool. Pouring that in. Look at that. Very nice. I cannot wait to taste this. And then we're going to add some kind of flavouring. So we're making a classic cheesecake today. So we're going for vanilla. Uh, you can use nice. uh, vanilla essence, which is what we're going to use today, or you can use a vanilla paste if you've got any of that. That's a little bit stronger, so you'd use a little bit that. fancy. A little bit fancy. Or you can use a different flavouring. It might be that in the cupboard you've got a different kind of food flavouring. Orange. Flavoring. Orange. Coffee. Coffee. Rose. Mm. Uh, so you can have a little experiment. Nesquik. No, I don't think that would work. I'm joking. It might. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And but we're going to use vanilla essence. Madagascan vanilla essence. Fancy. Here's my teaspoon. Bit cheesy. But uh, it's all in the same Just like Rebecca. <laughs> It's true. Sad but true. Or me. So in goes the vanilla essence. I'm going to put a whole teaspoon in because it's not that strong a flavour. Ooh. Ooh. I even did that heat. 
because that's how I roll. <laughs> so, I'm just going to soften it first. So I'm just going to use my big spoon and a little bit of uh, elbow grease to sort of just combine the mixture a bit. And then what you're going to want to do is we want to get some air into the mixture. So it might be that you've got a electric whisk that you could use, a handheld electric whisk, or uh, there's another name for those sorts of things that I've forgotten right now. A hand mixer, mix. brilliant, thanks or, uh, Chef Chef. You can, you can use a sick blender, stick so blender. you soup with sometimes before you serve the soup. Or if you haven't got any of those things, you can use a, a balloon whisk if you've got a handheld balloon whisk. And if you haven't got that, a fork is your best, best next thing. Yeah, because they've got you get a little bit of air in with a fork, so you're going to be beating. So uh, mix that, whisk that, whisk that, Rebecca. Whisk it up, whisk it up. There we go. It's getting the, it's getting the air in. So yeah, I'm sure you know how to whisk at home, but you want a nice circular motion to try and get some air in. It's a lot easier if you've got an electric fork. But it's a lot harder someone else to do it. if you're using a fork. So, uh, but you'll be well trained if you're using a fork. You'll definitely be an Olympic standard for using a fork. Okay. So how long should you whisk for? Well, you want it as airy as possible. So, uh, ooh, a good, uh, if you're giving it a welly, everyone in the house should have a go. And everyone in it has a go, okay. Yeah. Do I actually have a go? Yeah, you have a go. We good? I think we're good. Yeah, if it's quite stiff, then you're good. Right, okay, so we've got all our ingredients mixed, ready to go. So the next bit is assembly. So, it's uh, we're gonna use a bigger dish like this, but you, if you haven't got a dish this size, you can use anything. You can make small ones. If you've got a ramkin left over from those very fancy nice desserts, you could use that. Or, uh, another little part, you could put it into a wine glass you could even put it into a dessert bowl or soup bowl it's totally up to you we're going to use the bigger one so you're going to take your mixture and pour it out and pour it in there like that and you're going to smoosh it around the bottom of the bowl and then you want to get it so that your base is kind of what's the word rebecca Solid? Solid, as solid as you can get it. So I'm going to use the back of a spoon to really push that down so that it's a good base for your cream cheese mixture to go on. You see what? I'm smooshing it with the back of the spoon. Oh, it's the deliciousest mixture in the world. It's just popping that in. So get it all out as much as you can. All those ingredients, clear that bowl. Yeah, so you want to smooth it with the back of a spoon or a spatula or anything you've got so that you've got a nice flat top, as flat as you can. And if you've got excess in your spoon, take it off and do that with another spoon. Top tip, spoon on spoon. Right, I think that's it, Rebecca. Looks good. Now uh, you can pop that aside in the fridge to settle up a bit, or if you want to, you can eat it straight away. It's a no-bake cheesecake, but we're going to pop ours in the fridge for a little bit, just to solid up a bit more. Yeah. And then we're going to chop up some fruit, because uh, we're going to decorate uh, on top uh, of our cheesecake with some fresh fruit. Okay, we gave our cheesecake a very short chill. A short chill, about 10 minutes. <laughs> we didn't bother with the fridge, because it's quite cold. Put some nice chilled music out on. And now we're ready to decorate. Okay, so I don't know if you've heard any shouts going on for the ancient Greek Olympics, which is, as you know, is happening outside. But what they used to do is they used to shout out the name, where they were from, and what they were like, or what they looked like, characteristic of them. So they'd be like, hey, Achilles, the swift-footed of Ithaca. I'm not quite sure where Achilles is from, but you get the idea. And uh, everyone go, yay! Yay! Achilles is my foot in the music! I love it! So we thought, well, they're all 
arrow, shout nap. We want our own shout outs. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. think you guys should have a go at making up your own shout outs yeah. at homes. Olympic style. So I'll be Rebecca the Thoughtful of Newcastle. And Emily the Smiley of Oak Hill. Fabulous. Okay, so now we're going to use this to decorate our cheesecake. Mm -hmm. So if I was going to go for thoughtful, I could go for a question mark shape perhaps as my design. Or if, uh, not in ancient Greek times, but I could go for a light bulb or perhaps a, a lamp to show the light of thinking and make it historically accurate. Mm -hmm. That would be nice to talk, you know. Uh, and I'd just do a smiley, smiley face. Awesome. awesome. Just loads of teeth. Very nice. A bit creepy that bit. Creepy. But I, th I think we'll go with a smile. So we're uh, <laughs> we're going to grab our fruit, whatever you fruit you've got, and uh, we're going to chop them up nice and small so we can make our designs. So I don't know if you found some fruit. This is a fruit we found. We've also found some jam. So if, uh, if you don't want to just use fruit, you can put like a, a topping on as well. Jam will work well. Mm -hmm. This is quite a Chocolate jam. sauce. Chocolate sauce, very nice. Raspberry sauce, if you've got those ones that you put on ice cream, maybe. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Peanut butter. Ooh, Not sure peanut, about peanut butter. butter. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> not, not judging other people's taste, though. <laughs> Rebecca is. the judgy of Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Let's cut those bananas. Let's cut those bananas. Okay, so some top tips on using knives. Okay. So this is a super sharp knife, so if you're a, a little chef, uh, maybe don't use them at all. If you're a, if you're a grown-up chef watching at home, uh, or an older uh, chef, then it can be useful. You're actually less likely to have an accident if you're chopping something hard, like a potato, uh, with a, a sharp knife, because if it's a blunt knife and you slip, you're more likely, you're more likely to slip, so you're more likely to cut your Cut your thumb so it's great to have a nice sharp knife uh, but actually we're only cutting up bananas so i don't really need a, a sharp knife for that but i will need it for my orange so if at home i could just peel my orange if i want to your orange. i might peel my orange in fact chef emily might peel my orange for me while i demonstrate how to uh, well i'm going to demonstrate while i chop this as you chop yours at home top tip for if you want to peel an orange and it's quite difficult Roll it on the table first, it also makes it a bit juicier. Oh, didn't know that, never heard of that one. If you're a little chef and uh, you're not allowed to use sharp knives, then something like a banana or soft fruit like um, uh, strawberries uh, can easily be cut up with a butter knife. So it's just a, a not blunt knife at all, a, a very blunt knife, in fact. Uh, so you can join in and uh, cut up banana or strawberries would be fine with this. So, shall we make Emily the Smiley of Oak Hill, mm -hmm. or Rebecca the Thoughtful and Look A Bit Judgy of Newcastle? We could go half and half. Oh my goodness, that sounds a bit complicated. I we think. could share. Okay. Or we could just go for one of them. I'm easy. Let's go. Why don't we do a nice smiley face? I think that would be nice for the okay. uh, Olympic champion cheesecake. Does that mean I get to eat it all too? Just click quick on this one. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll wrestle for it, Olympic style, later, Emily. How about that? Okay. She'll wait until she's, she's definitely going to go. Oh, we'll play. oh, I like that orange smell. Very nice. So, I've got my banana. And jam. I'm going to put it in segments, so I'm going to... I think that'll look nice. Yeah. Ooh, dear. I think that's a bit messy. So, I hope you're chopping up your, your fruit at home and having a think about what your, your name might be. You don't have to save it for sporting events. You can get your family to shout it when you come into the room. <laughs> that might be fun. Sarah, the untidy of Port Hill. You haven't cleaned your room again. Very nice. Basically. Or Sarah, the tidy of Port Hill. Well done on cleaning your room again. So this is how you make uh, Olympic no-bake cheesecakes. This is our final product. The mouth is a little bit drippy. Uh, so uh <coughs> Chef! We've got to go! I entered one of the competitions and uh, because I was fully clothed, uh, I got disqualified and now they're after us. Get the cheesecake! We've got to go back! <coughs> to the time machine fridge!
For you, we made it back in one piece. Oh, that was a bit of an adventure, wasn't it? Quite. All the way to ancient Greece. And back again. And we've managed to keep the cheesecake. I hope your uh, Olympic cheesecake went okay. I hope it goes better than mine. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.